Hey YouTube, have you ever wanted to have like a solar generator, a power station, some solar panel, but not take up like a ton of room? Check it out. This is the solar generator bucket. What do we have in here? We got a 12 volt heated blanket. We've got a solar power station that we DIY'd in a ammo can. And we got a six flexible solar panel, 75 watt solar panel, coiled up in this bucket. Can you believe this? Check this thing out. So this is a flexible panel, but it's way more flexible than the ones that we're used to. So it, it, this is able to coil up and fit into that bucket without getting damaged. And then we have the uh, ammo can solar power station. We've got a 300 watt inverter, charge controller, uh, 640 watt uh, lithium iron phosphate battery, a smart BMS. Let's take a look at how we built this. All right, guys. So let's build this uh, power station in the 50 caliber ammo can. So a couple of videos back, I did a battery build, a DIY battery build with these Navitas uh, lithium iron phosphate 25 amp hour cells. So there's there's eight 25 amp hours cells that are series and then paralleled for a 50 amp hour 12 volt battery. And I've, I've since tidied it up a little bit since that video. I taped it up a little bit better and I put uh, this fiberboard insulator on it and I stuck the BMS to that and I added a uh, XT90 connector. That's the battery. We've got a, an inverter from Coolsla. This is a really neat little inverter. It's a pure sine wave, 300 watt. Oh, look at this guy, it's so small. And look, it's got a XT60 input connector. Really neat. Um, it's got USB connectors and a um, USB-C connector. So these say uh, 2.4 amp on the USB and it shows 60 watt on the USB-C. Pretty neat. And it has the 110 volt receptacle plugs on the top. So perfect. And then we have a Genesis GV10 MPPT charge controller. This will do 10.5 amp uh, I think it will take a max of a 35 volt PV input. And I just added some wires on it to connect everything. And uh, I built a little wiring harness to plug into the battery. And of course, we got the Bluetooth module for this BMS so we can monitor everything from the phone. So let's, oh, let's open up the ammo can and the really neat part about this ammo can and the battery I built it just so happens that this fits super great oh. what we want to do is fit it like that make sure all our wires get tucked in don't want to pinch those off. There we go. Check that out. <laughs> it fits like a glove. Then our inverter will end up uh, on top, like so. And then our charge controller will end up here. Like so. 
you can see I've already kind of planned this out before I started shooting a video. <laughs> I didn't want to uh, stand here for hours scratching my head figuring out how all this stuff is going to fit in. So and then there's uh, still space right here for, you know, if you want to throw some cords in there or, you know, some other supplies or something. You know, so we still have room. We actually, <laughs> I've got another one of these charge controllers. I could put another one on this side and double how many panels we could put on this. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get it wired up. So this wiring harness will connect to the XT90 connector, the main connector of the battery. Like so, and then that way we've got a plug that will go to the inverter, and then this plug goes to the charge controller. So let's go ahead and install the charge controller right up against the wall there, I think. Yeah, and I put some Velcro, some industrial strength Velcro on here that we can use. There we go. Very solid there. That Velcro will hold that very well. Then that plug is the battery, so there we go. And uh, should see lights. And I don't actually see lights. Wonder if I've got to turn the BMS on. Let's hook up the uh, Bluetooth module. Oh, yeah, now it has lights. I don't know if you can see that in there. Yeah, see that light flashing? Um, I actually just hooked up the Bluetooth module and pushed that, that little button there. So the BMS, I think, was, was off because I had uh, disconnected the balance leads trying to tidy it up and whatnot. Okay, so let's just, you know, this could actually be Velcroed somewhere out of the way. I'll end up tidying this thing up a lot more, but for now, I just want to get it together. Uh, also got a cigarette lighter adapter plug, so if that's a handy thing if you want to plug in things that use that. And then the inverter. inverter. There we go. That out. <laughs> That's basically it, guys. Um, now the inverter, of course, uh, we could put some Velcro on the bottom of it and on top of the battery and just stick it there. Uh, so, for, but for right now, I'm not really worried about it. I'm just going to let it kind of set there. But um, this thing is basically complete now. The <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people build uh, these uh, ammo box solar power station generators, and uh, you know they drill holes all through them and put little connectors and whatnot, and that's really convenient. I, I do agree. But I, I kind of didn't want to do that because I wanted to maintain the um, the seal of the box because I really wanted to this to be uh, hardened from the environment. Like you can close this guy up and take it and you know if you're out camping or whatever 
it's closed up at your campsite and it's going to be safe safe from from uh, wild animals like we see here it's going to be safe from the rain you know you're not going to have to worry about that if there was holes all poked in it i don't think you know it, i think it would be compromised so let's see if we can pull up the bms app and i'm curious actually if i can connect to the bms through the the metal i really wouldn't need to because you can't really use it unless it's open but uh let's see here we got yeah it actually can so it shows 97 percent um state of charge 97.8 state of charge the voltage no power being used at this moment um let's try to connect something i'll take the lid off and um i'm going to turn the inverter on there's a little button which is handy that way this inverter doesn't just stay on draining the battery down interestingly even though it's on i don't see it really draining anything but that could be because the shunts a lot of these shunts on these bms's can't read real real low power draw let's plug in a light now this is just a oh no, this is an LED light bulb. It's not incandescent. But let's just see what happens. Turn it on. There we go. Very nice. 18 watts. Now it's a 14 watt bulb. I don't know if you can see. It says it right there, very small print. Uh, but uh, so the 18 watts would have been um, the inefficiencies of the inverter. So the inverter is probably like 80% efficient. Uh, let's put in, let's plug in another light. This one is a not a LED light. It's a fluorescent tube. Um, Plug that in. See what she does. Ah, there we go. 33 watt. Very nice. Yeah, so the unit's uh, working just fine. There's still room back here for a little fan to run. I think actually I'll end up putting some Velcro on the battery too. I, I think it's in there tight enough to where it really won't move around, but I'm probably going to put some on the bottom and maybe the back side just to. Um, keep it in place a little bit better. And then maybe some Velcro on this guy to keep things from rattling around. So that, yeah, now what we need to do is hook up some solar and see if we, we actually start charging something. So hang tight. So this claims to be a 130 watt panel. I don't think it actually is. I've never seen that much out of it. I think I've only seen maybe a max of 75 watts out of this thing. Anyways, it's enough to test with. So let's see. Let's see what kind of lights. So we got a green flashing light on the MPPT, which I can't really tell what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> But uh, let's look at the app and see if we got any power going in. Um, they're showing 45 watts, but is that coming out? Let's turn the inverter off. Okay, the inverter's off. Oh, look. Yeah, we're showing 72 watts. Now 
we're showing a 5.5 amps going in. Interesting. So, let's turn the inverter back on. And we're showing uh, 2.7 amps going into the battery. So the this uh, supposed 130 watt panel, which isn't, <laughs> is putting like 70 watts in, and uh, it's a it's a really overcast day, so we don't have a whole lot of power. Yeah. So we yeah yeah so we have a little bit of current going in. Since Dally updated their little BMS app, it's a little confusing. Like I can't, from this screen I can't really tell if there's power going in or coming out. <laughs> you know, like right now it just says zero. <laughs> Let me turn the thing off here, inverter off. So that's, uh, okay, 3.4 going in. Now I'm gonna try to see if I can tell a difference. If something gives me any kind of indication of it going in versus coming out. So I'm gonna disconnect the solar. So we should go back down to zero. Okay, so we're, we're at zero. Now, turning on the inverter, okay, lights are on, okay, so yeah, so now we get a negative uh, sign here showing that there's current coming out of the battery. So now we plug in the solar so that negative sign should flip. So I'm plug one of the lights because maybe we're just producing just enough solar. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. We were just producing only just enough solar to uh, run the uh, the lights and not actually put it into the battery. So now we've got a positive current going into the battery. So that's that screen. I'm going to go to this screen right here. Okay, so it shows up uh, 22 watts going in. And um, what I want to do is see if there's any indication of power coming out so we're at zero so we're just using enough we just have enough solar to power the load so I'm disconnecting the solar yeah so this this screen here is, is super confusing because it gives no indication of the direction here so right now we're pulling out 30 watts, uh, but <laughs> if I plug in the solar and uh, disconnect one of the lights, uh, we should s there should give us something that tells us that now power is going in, but it doesn't. It doesn't tell us. So there's no negative sign on this. So Dally, you guys need to fix this part of your app. But we can tell here. Um, that there's power coming out so I guess that's okay anyways all right so that works let's let's try the the SIGS solar panel the flexible guy Okay, 
there's the flexible SIGS panel, 75 watt. And um, yeah, it's it's really overcast, so I don't expect it for very much to be coming out of this. But uh, let's try to take a look at the app and see if we've got anything going on. Oh, there we go. Now we're showing 34 watts. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, It's just a sucky day for solar. The sun kind of peaked out a little bit better and then I, I moved it up at this angle and we started uh, producing some power. But, uh, yeah, 37.5 watts. I'm curious now that the sun has poked out a little bit, what does it do when it's flat? Not 28, you know, like 28 watts. Well, let's pack this thing up, back up into the bucket. So you really do have to start off pretty tight to get it to fit in. And then you can let it kind of expand out. But there we go. It's in. We want to make sure the inverter's off. Probably it would be a good idea to unplug it all. There we go. Shut that down in there. Put the lid on. And now see there's a handle here. Probably wise to get this out of the way. Like so. And you got room up here for your PV cables. Now these are way overkill. You you don't need uh um, 10 gauge PV cables here you could just build you up like a you know a 12 or hell even a 20 gauge set but the, as you see that fits in there quite nicely and you've got more room now for this solar panel uh, to fit you do have to have a you know, like a six gallon bucket instead of your typical five gallon bucket and this came from academy it's a ball bucket i think they're they're like nine or ten dollars or something like that and they've got all different kinds of colors if you want you do have to have the slightly taller one for this to fit in there and there you have it the solar survival bucket, if you will. Take it with you camping, uh, throw it in a corner of your garage and pretty much kind of forget about it until you need it in, in the event of emergency, a zombie apocalypse, end of the world, all that kind of stuff. Just grab it with your uh, rest of your bug out materials and supplies and get on the road or, or just go camping. <laughs> or just go out into nature and, and have some uh, some fun but also have uh, a solar bucket solar power bucket I almost forgot guys I got this uh, just just got this off Amazon it's a 12 volt uh, heating blanket and that's one of the reasons why I did actually put the uh, cigarette uh, adapter in there cigarette lighter adapter so can we fit that in there too I feel like Maybe. Oh, look at that. I think we can. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed, we can. Now, uh, there's a heated, heated, heated blanket in there. <laughs> Let's test that guy, actually. I'm curious to see how warm it gets. 
and also how much power it uses. So let's plug it right in. Here we go. Got a red light indicating uh, it's working, I guess. Okay, so we're pulling uh, uh, 3.8 amps. Oh, so like 48 watts. So that's a 640 watt hour battery. So if we're pulling 48 watts, how long will this battery keep us warm? So 640 divided by 48. Oh look, it should keep us warm for 13.3 hours. Wow, that's plenty of time to get us through a cold night. Now the question is, how warm is this blanket? Oh, I feel it getting fairly warm actually. It's cold outside. I really want to put something in it. All right, so let's put this copper bus bar in there. It's setting at like roughly 60. It was it was in my garage, so it's a little warmer than outside. Oh yeah, it's toasty. In there. And uh, we'll let it set in there for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes or something. All right, guys, so it's been like, I don't know, 20 minutes probably. I took the dog for a walk. Um, let's see what we got. So, um, like, I guess outside we're at like, uh, I don't know, 59. Let's see, uh, 54 on the window there. So in the mid 50s, and let's see, let's just see what the top of the, oh look, like 72, 78 on top of the blanket. So this is gonna, oh, oh my. Wow, that is warm, guys. Where's this thing at? Uh, there we go. Oh yeah, check this out. What do we got here? 80. Eighty-six. Yeah. Uh that'll keep you toasty. That'll keep you toasty in the cold, guys. Nice. Uh so that's rad, actually. Um so let's take a look at the BMS app and see what we're doing one more time yeah so we're uh let's see we're still doing 40 well a little bit lower than what we were at 48 watts and so now we're doing uh 43 watts uh watts so we ended up going down a little bit that's interesting uh wow and uh 95 percent battery left interesting nice all right, guys, so um, that was a fun project, and I'm going to enjoy having this thing around in case I want to take it camping or something like that or have some kind of, you know, outage or an emergency. I've got other uh, solar stuff for that, really. But um, I'll leave links in the description for everything that I can uh, if you guys want to do something like this. The uh, Flex solar panels, the SIG solar panels, uh, are from Bean Energy. You, he's got a YouTube channel too. You can check that out. But you can buy these from him. Uh, I think it's beanenergy.com. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to that. If you use, a, he gave me a discount code, Brad, B R A D. If you use that, you'll get 10% off. And they're already cheap because he got them like liquidation or something like that. Uh, the company that made these are, are out of business. So. Uh, I think this one's a 75 watt and I think they were selling for $75 with 10% off. So 
and he's got 60 watts, 65 watts. I think he's also got 200 watts, except for they're not in that same form factor. They're a lot wider. Uh, so they unfortunately will not fit in that bucket. You might be able to get like a, <laughs> a 50 gallon drum or something and put it in. But yeah, the reason why you definitely would want to use those <laughs> as opposed to other flex panels is your, the other flex panels like I've got here, um, yeah, that one's not open. Uh, but these, like the Sun Power flexible panels, uh, they're they're really not that flexible. They will not bend to that kind of radius uh, without you know screwing up, without breaking really. Uh, whereas these six panels will, because they are a thin film. And I think it's like, this is like a stainless steel backing. Uh, the other thing too is when you put this in your bucket, make sure the cells are facing out like I've got it. Because uh, I think that uh, will eliminate the possibility of delamination. The company that originally made these uh, solo power so do they still have a website up, solopower.com. I don't know how long it will be up, uh, but they do still have one. And uh, I got to admit, I did not, uh, this is not an original idea. I saw this idea on their website. So they had a, they had a solo, they called it a solo bucket. And uh, they did uh, the same thing. And I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty genius, actually. Uh, so there's a lot of people, I know there's a lot of people out there that, that would like to have like a solar uh, generator or backup or something like that, but you don't want, <laughs> you don't want these stacked up in your garage or something like that. Uh, so being in a little bucket right there, uh, so much, so much more convenient. But anyways, I'll put all the links into the description. I'll catch you guys in the next video.